Um, okay, so I'm here to talk about the state of GeoRaster layer. It's a Leaflet JS plugin for visualizing GeoTIFFs. Uh, but before I get started, I have some questions for you all. Um, by raise of hands, uh, who here uh, knows about Leaflet? Okay, great. Um, who here uh, has heard of GeoRaster layer before? Great, I'll take it. Uh, and then who here has uh, used GeoRaster layer before? Thank you. <laughs> I'll ask you again next year. So it's a JavaScript library for easily, oh sorry, um, what is Leaflet? Uh, Leaflet is a JavaScript library for easily creating web maps. Uh, this is from the website. Uh, as you can see, the, the code um, really is quite small to, to get a map up and running. So I'd encourage you to, to check out uh, Leaflet. Even if you don't use GeoRaster Layer, it's still a great library. Uh, Leaflet was created uh, 11 years ago by uh, Volodymyr, a uh, Ukrainian citizen living in Kyiv. Uh, I encourage everyone to uh, inform yourselves about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. There's a fly. Uh, what, I'll take any attendance, even by flies. Uh, what is GeoRaster Layer? So it's a plugin for displaying geo-referenced images uh, like cloud-optimized geotiffs. Uh, GeoRaster Layer is built from the ground up to be memory safe, which means it won't crash your browser, even if you're trying to load a geotiff with hundreds of megabytes. It has some features. Uh, super fast uh, rendering, uh, <laughs> uh, thanks to uh, simple nearest resampling, uh, support for nearly um, all projections, um, meaning uh, the projections that have an EPSG code. Uh, runs on the CPU, uh, no WebGL required. Uh, auto scales and uh, renders single band data without uh, pre-computed stats. Supports custom rendering, including custom colors and directional arrows. Um, requires a little work to get uh, the directional arrows. Um, but we got an example if, if you're interested in that. Uh, mask uh, data inside or outside a given geometry. And, and uh, by mask, I mean if, if you're just focused on one country and you only want to see NDVI inside of Afghanistan, um, you can mask out the rest of the world. Uh, and it's got a great community, which now includes all of you. So um, there's uh, just a small sampling of the, the features under development. Uh, we've sort of moved into the phase of the, the remaining 20%, the, the harder edge cases. Um, and so uh, what that means is, uh, we're moving uh, the rendering to web workers uh, that works on, in progress. And we've also improved the extent calculations. Uh, that hasn't been published yet, um, but will be published soon. Uh, also improving accuracy and resolution and uh, trying to fix more and more edge cases. And um, for today, I'm going to talk about uh, those first two uh, bullets. And hopefully uh, we'll have some fun. So uh, what is a web worker? Who uh, would like to volunteer and answer that question? Okay, Ivan. It's a JavaScript thread. Yes, uh, it's, a, it's a JavaScript <laughs> thread. Um, so we can explain what it is. Yeah, uh, so, so we'll, we'll uh, unpack more. Um, and uh, here's a, a visualization. So um, you can see your, your main thread is on top, and that's sort of like uh, the, the central process that, that's in command of your, your web uh, browser tab. Uh, and then your web worker are going to be uh, sub-processes or um, uh, other threads. Uh, if you have multiple CPUs, sometimes 
that will run on, on multiple CPUs. Uh, but you don't need to have a ton of CPUs to take advantage of web workers. Um, and so it's, it's a way to sort of bring uh, asynchronousness, asynchronicity and multiprocessing uh, to the browser. Uh, so for example, uh, one of your web workers, its job might be decoding and reading a geotiff. Then another web worker, its job would be reprojecting an image. I would like to be that worker and say this one. This one's really hard. And so for a GeoRaster layer for Leaflet, we actually build on top of uh, the fabulous GeoTIFF JS, uh, which is maintained by uh, Fabian uh, from EOX. Uh, so why web workers? Um, what does freeing up the main thread mean and why do we care? Uh, so one of the problems when you try to do everything on the main thread is you're mixing the rendering logic with the interactions uh, that the user is doing. Uh, so if a user is panning or, or zooming their map really quickly, um, we don't want to block that or have that interfere with the, the rendering. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, you can take advantage of multiple CPUs. Uh, it reduces the lag um, because we're going to try to do... Um, I don't know if this phrase is used here, walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, uh, do multiple things at the same time. And uh, also it's personally, as a developer, it's a good forcing function to uh, force me to abstract the logic out of the idiosyncrasies of a browser uh, so it can be applied elsewhere. Um, so maybe the rendering logic, if it works in a web worker, it, it should be able to uh, work in a, a Node.js backend thread as well. So um, there, there's a, a question here. Um, if you can't pass a function to a web worker, which browsers don't allow you to do, uh, similar to if you're working in like Python and you, you can't pass a thread to, uh, you can't pass a function to um, a, another thread. Um, and so how, how can we support band arithmetic when someone might want to run NDVI, for example, uh, near infrared minus red over near infrared plus red. We can't just pass a function like that to um, our web worker. So we're working on, on solving that and there's uh, a lot of prior art here. Uh, so there's, there's two ways that um, really great uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll describe them briefly to provide context. Uh, so the first is um, using a URL parameter uh, that T.I. Tyler um, has, has shown to use, um, as well as Marble Cutter and some others. And um, it's often called expression or band expression or EXPR. Uh, and then uh, that, so that would just be a little thing you add to your, your URL. And then open layers um, will have a, JSON serializable, um, in other words, an easily cloned uh, structure um, that uh, describes the band arithmetic that you want to do. And then there's another way uh, that we're working on, which we'll uh, describe. Uh, so the example of what T.I. Tyler does to, to solve this problem is uh, adds this expression uh, parameter to your URL. And so your band arithmetic, uh, how you want to process your raster is, is really just a string. It's B3 minus B1 over B3 plus B1. So it's a really clean, really simple to use, um, a really great way to, uh, to do band arithmetic. Um, but it's, it's a bit limiting because you don't have a full range of anything you can do in JavaScript. Or, um, uh, Python, or the, no, it uses um, a library called uh, numexpr. Um, so you're kind of restricted to, to the limitations of that program. And then here's what Open Layers does, uh, which is um, a really great approach. Uh, it, it's really easy to, to take 
something like this and, and pass it to your web worker. Uh, one way to check to see if you can pass something to a web worker is just try to convert it to JSON. And, and if it works, then you can definitely convert it to a string and pass it to the web worker or convert it into some other um, format and pass it to the web worker. Um, but you can see it, it's still not coding. Um, it's still not a, a custom function. And so for a GeoRaster layer, uh, we want to make it really easy to use. Um, our, we're trying to optimize on ease of use. That's, that's our highest value. Um, performance is an important value, but it's not the highest one for us. Uh, okay. So um, I am the main thread. Uh, and I, uh, this is a text message I had. Actually, I'm gonna go over here because I'm, I'm on this side, I'm the, the purple. So I'm, I'm the main thread, and then um, uh, some, some, the, the, the web worker's over there. And so the, the way GeoRaster Layer for Leaflet is solving this problem is it's uh, using messages, which uh, web workers support. Uh, so for example, I, I uh, send a message, I type my message, uh, hello, tile worker. Here is the unique name of the ban expression function uh, that I've de defined on my main thread. Uh, and I, I call it EXPR, but I also give it a unique uh, set of numbers at the end to distinguish it. Um, and then I, as a main thread, send the message to the worker. And then um, the worker is the one who's actually uh, rendering the image, and it's going to ask the main thread, hey, that, that function that you can't send me, can you just uh, tell me what the result is when I have a pixel value of 423? Uh, so main thread me uh, sends back that color should be um, 255, 72, 26, and then uh, it just does it a thousand times. Or, or more. Uh, so there, there's some drawbacks, uh, along with you know any uh, sort of messaging system, there's some latency, the time it takes for the message to, to arrive. But if you're running on your, you know, your own computer and it's messages between programs on your computer, so it's pretty quick, but it's not perfect. Uh, but it is a way that we can allow a web worker to uh, run a JavaScript function as an input. Um, it just, it kind of proxies uh, the, the input by just requesting the main thread to run it. So there's, um, if you're looking at uh, similar approaches, uh, Google Chrome's uh, comlink is uh, doing um, RPC uh, built on protobufs, I believe. And so that is a way to, to send um, references to a function uh, between the main thread and the um, worker thread. And then a simpler alternative uh, is one I built uh, for this purpose, and it's built on JSON RPC. Uh, which is uh, more accessible. And that's called microlink. Okay, so we're, we're moving on to another problem now. Uh, I just wanna time check here. Okay, 320, great. I'll try, try to be quick uh, so we can have some questions. So this, uh, the other problem that we're solving is extent calculations. Extents, also known as bounding boxes, aren't always perfect rectangles, and that's a real bummer because it makes everything a lot harder. And so in this example, uh, GeoTIFF, uh, this, this is visualizing a GeoTIFF, um, and th this was visualized in QGIS for the demonstration, um, but we'll talk about the principle. Um, and uh, it's using the NAT83 uh, projection for Quebec, uh, and so when you render that TIFF uh, into the web mercator, which we're using for the web tile, uh, it's uh, going to have uh, a big curve on the top. 
and that's going to create some problems for us. So how, how do we solve this issue where we need to know where our image is? Um, so the naive way uh, and the easiest way uh, is to just reproject the corners. But you can see that when we just reproject the corners, uh, it, it's not a, a clean fit. So what we can do, um, yeah, so, so the example here is we've gotten a bounding box for our GeoTIFF, but this part at the top, um, our program doesn't think that it's a part of our image because it's just reprojecting the corners of the GeoTIFF. So it's, it's totally missing that. And so when we want to render something, it's going to miss it. So how, so how do we solve it? We just keep adding points uh, to the edges. So as you, as you can see, when we keep adding more points, that, that red line on top uh, keeps getting bigger or taller. So we're extending our bounding box to uh, fit the image. Um, so this is not something unique to GeoRaster layer. Uh, that's just describing what we just did. Um, if, if you have need for this in JavaScript, um, you could check out uh, bbox-fns, uh, which is sort of like lodash or underscore, but for bounding boxes. Uh, it's a bunch of utility functions, and uh, it's not competing with TurfJS. It's much more narrower focus. Um, Turf's more of a general purpose library for GeoJSON. Um, and so if, and also um, it's my hope that uh, if you're working in another language, uh, you could apply this principle to reprojecting uh, the extent of your images uh, more accurately. So here's our roadmap. Um, we're working on uh, using GeoWarp, um, which, um, some of that was presented on earlier today, and uh, we're adding new resampling algorithms to increase the, the accuracy of your, your rendered images. Moving web workers, we wanna support really all gridded uh, raster data, uh, including ASCII grid, uh, georeference images, and, and uh, maybe ZAR, and NetCDF, and, and PM tiles and COM tiles when, when they use rasters. And uh, we're considering uh, finding a way to, to add WebGL as a performance boost, uh, but make it sort of uh, still able to, to do a good job when WebGL isn't available. Uh, we wanna support React Leaflet integration um, and improve um, some rendering. And, uh, and that's, that, that's it, yeah. So if, if you have any questions, um, um, love to hear them. Thank you. Yeah, um, so uh, that, that's interesting you, you brought that up. Uh, so that, uh, that, that's um, kind of a, there's no JavaScript decoder for JPEG 2000, last I checked. Uh, so that would need to be written before um, adding it to GeoRaster layer. Um, yeah. So uh, somehow um, either uh, someone, probably a company needs to fund that work because it's, um, it's, a, it's a large lift and it's not something everyone uses. It's actually funny now that you asked. Uh, a pharma company reached out to me and asked me about that. And then I said, could you give me, uh, or I, I said in a polite way, I'm open to contracting 
for it. And I was going to lowball them. Like I would do it for pennies. And then they were like, they just ghosted me. So um, it's, 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 it's something that would probably require a company to fund. Yeah, yeah, um, a great question. Uh, I don't have um, my internet available right now, but uh, so there's, there's a few things. Um, there's, there's a project called uh, Proj4 Fully Loaded, and that is uh, a compressed uh, data file of all the projections uh, scraped from epsg.io, um, the Proj4 strings, and loaded up into a JavaScript package um, and imported into the browser. And then um, sort of the, the actual usage of that is uh, currently it's kind of a mixed bag, but where we're moving to is putting all that reprojection logic into uh, GeoWarp. Um, so if you, if you Google um, that, it, you, it's moving, we're trying to abstract away the rendering logic from the actual intricacies of the browser and into like a higher level package called GeoWarp. And we'll be integrating that in a GeoRaster layer, hopefully in the near future. Uh, the, you could put them on GitHub and it will read them from GitHub. So they just need to be at some URL. Yeah. Uh, so it's possible to reach out to the teach on public S3 bucket? On like a private S3 bucket? Uh, let's say public. Oh. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so if you go to the GeoTIFF organization on GitHub, uh, there's a repo called GeoRaster Layer for Leaflet dash example, and then that's got some examples of that. Um, one of the challenges of, of using public S3 endpoints is sometimes the providers change the URL, and so some of those examples will, will, will not, no longer use the S3 endpoint, and I've sort of, I guess, Say, um, loaded it uh, in my own S3 bucket. So I, I guess that would still be help, helpful to look at. But there's some examples for that. For private S3 buckets, um, I know that is an issue that's been brought up before, uh, but that's going to require an upgrade to not just this library, but a lot of the dependencies as well. And so I, I think I would want to follow up with um, the GeotiffJS people and, and talk to them about that. Um, private access is more difficult.